Hello folks, Robert from Marine Depot here and thanks for tuning in. Now I'm really excited about this video because we have some new giant clams here at Marine Depot and in this video we're going to show you guys how to properly acclimate and care for a giant clam in your reef tank. So stay tuned to check out these new clams in our office tanks and get some helpful tips that are going to keep your tridacna clam happy and healthy. When choosing a clam, it is best to select a larger clam. Smaller clams are typically more difficult to keep and they require more feeding. Larger clams that are three inches or bigger are much hardier and easier to acclimate into your home aquarium. Pay close attention to the mantle as it should be evenly colored with no bleached areas or tears and a smooth edge. The large inhalant opening in the mantle should be a slit and not wide open or gaping. If you're selecting the clam from your local fish store, wave your hand above the aquarium to block the light. A healthy clam should react quickly. Inspect the bissel organ or foot on the bottom of a clam to make sure it is intact and not damaged. As you can see, the maxima clams we have here are already attached to some rubble. We recommend drip acclimating your newly purchased clam for about 45 minutes to an hour. The Innovative Marine AccuDrip works great for this and it's really easy to use. During the acclimation period, you want to inspect the clam closely for parasites and hitchhikers. The biggest concern for clam owners are the dreaded pyramid snails. These tiny little snails are no bigger than a quarter of an inch and look like a grain of rice. They will tack and consume the mantle or flesh of the clam. They reproduce very quickly and can be really difficult to remove. Be sure to check under the clam by the foot and all around the shell for the snails themselves or their egg sacs. The shell of the clam can also hold a variety of other parasites and hitchhikers such as aptasia, bristle worms, and nudibranchs. If you find any hitchhikers or the dreaded pyramid snail, you'll want to physically remove them before placing the clam into your tank. A toothbrush along with a pair of tweezers works really well to remove these hitchhikers. Just be sure to clean the clam thoroughly in a separate container. When placing the clam in your tank, it's important to know the species or type of clam that you have. Crocea and Maxima clams are found in rocky habitats and should be placed in the rockwork or on a hard substrate. Duresa, Squamosa, and Gigas clams are best placed on sandy substrate as this is where they're typically found in the wild. Since we have the Tridacna Maxima clams, I place them on a flat piece of shelf rock. Because they're new, we want to place them in areas of lower lighting to allow them to acclimate. If placed under too much light, a clam can bleach out. No matter the species, the clam should be placed on a horizontal surface that exposes the entire mantle to light because clams rely heavily on photosynthesis. It will take a few days for the clams to attach and using some rubble rock or the clam mount that we offer on our website, you can prop up the clam and help prevent it from falling over. Keep them away from other aggressive corals and also be sure your tank does not house any clam predators. Certain wrasses and angelfish have been known to attack and devour clams in an aquarium. A healthy clam will open with the mantle fully exposed during the daylight hours. Because clams rely heavily on photosynthesis, they do best in aquariums with high output lighting. Maxima and Crochea clams require more light, while Duresa, Squamosa, and Gigas clams require less light. Research your newly purchased clam and place them according to their lighting requirements. For water flow, you do not want a strong direct current blasting the clam because this will surely stress it out. I find that if the mantle is moving around or flapping in the current, your water flow is probably too strong and you'll want to move it to a calmer area of your aquarium. Although giant clams are mostly photosynthetic, they are filter feeders and they will filter out particulate organic matter from your aquarium water and they absorb organic compounds from the water such as nitrate, phosphate, and ammonia. Feeding small particle foods such as phytoplankton will help boost the health and promote the growth of your giant clams and we carry a variety of awesome foods here at MD. The Phycopure Zooxanthellae from Algagen is the first and only product of its kind. It contains a blend of live Zooxanthellae algae and it has been reported to have excellent results in helping clams and corals recover from stress and it also helps increase the coloration. The Algagen Phycopure Phytoplankton, Algagen Coral Smoothie, Brightwell Phytoplankton and other phytoplankton products are also great for giant clams. So once your giant clam has been acclimated to your aquarium, be sure to supply it with the proper levels of calcium and alkalinity for growth because they will consume this quicker than you think. 
Regular additions of iodine will also help out with growth and color. If you're looking to get a giant clam or you simply have some questions, feel free to contact our trained team of aquarium experts for fast and friendly service. If you found this video helpful, please like and share it to help out other hobbyists. We do appreciate all of you for watching and until next time, take care and happy reef keeping.